portions of Andersonville. Guys, this is a really hot area. And I believe Rahm Emanuel, in referencing your award, I think he was talking about that area, said that uptown ought to be to music what downtown is to theater. Molly Phelan, I'll start with you. Um, will there be a huge shift in development in the ward under a theater? No, Alderman no, not at all. Position ...that there was under Helen Schiller? I think we're going to see a movement in terms of really taking the bones of the entertainment district and allowing us to bring a lot of great jobs to the neighborhood to people who really need it. You know, part of the um, concept that I've been putting forth since July in terms of this economic um, uh, entertainment district is the fact that nobody's really paired this up with the cultural uh, diversity that we have in the neighborhood. Really, for successful uh, entertainment districts throughout the United States, there has to be a cultural diversity, a cultural backdrop to make it enter to make it uh, enter or attractive to people to come from other places. So I think that's been the missing link that I'm really going to provide uh, ownership and celebrate the cultural diversity that we have in the ward in light of this, in conjunction with this entertainment district, and provide jobs to everybody in the 46th ward. Yeah, right. I want to work in a bar, you bet. Once again, a shift from low housing, uh, you know, advocacy, as we saw, uh, under a, uh, a uh, Kappelman alderman chip. Well, actually, we wouldn't be having this conversation about the entertainment district without people like me testifying in 2001 for the Lawrence Broadway tip. That, that Except those fucking theaters have always been there, you asshole. Uh, retail into the area, the Heilig Meyer building, uh, the Goldblatt's building, the uh, Broadway Uptown building, a, a lot has, has happened. Uh, however, uh, I I know this this ward and I know it very well and I want to make sure that when we do lick at all the types of housing that it's safe for everyone and so that's going to continue. Is there a lots of affordable uh, housing in this area? Absolutely. And we want to maintain it and we want to make sure it's, it's maintained well, as we want all types of housing maintained well. All right. Now, Ron Emanuel has chosen to stay out of this race. Uh, my understanding is, unless one of you can say something differently, he has not spoken to either of you in terms of offering his support for you. The 46th Ward is one I think he seems to want to just see less what happens, uh, and he stays out of it. But that being said, Molly Fiedel, let, let me talk to you, because I have read about some uh, uh, certainly cash contributions, nearly $10,000, that Brendan Riley from the 42nd Ward has given to your campaign. And um, uh, Greg Hines writes about that in, in, uh, in uh, Cranes, basically saying, you know, Riley may be trying to build his own force on city council, perhaps a lot of aldermen want to do that. What is your thought in terms of the, the significant donation? You talked about the donations James got uh, or gave to other candidates, but and then we see the Riley donation to you. What Talk to me about the influence Riley might have under a, uh, a feeling. Administration. Well, Brendan and I have been very good friends for you know over six years. I'm very good <laughs> friends with his wife, uh, Kristen, as well. Um, so, in terms of you know. Brendan and my relationship with him politically, you know, he's been a tremendous reformer in city council. He also unseated an incumbent who was in there for 32 years. Um, so, you know, he ran his campaign without the support of any of the unions or any, uh, you know, um, big political movers and shakers. And he did it on his own. He's a very independent mind. He's a reformer, and he and I have similar views on issues. So I think that's the underlying reason why he supported my campaign is because I'm going to be somebody who is going to be a reformer on city council. All right, James, and, you know, look at fairness. As you said, you have uh, Jan Schakowsky behind you now. It's raising a similar question. So what, what kind of allegiance do some of these folks who stand behind you expect from you if you're the alderman in terms of standing behind their plans? Well, I mean, if, if, if you look at Molly's D2s and you look at her campaign contributions, around 90% of her money is coming from, from big business leaders who have never had an interest in the 46th Ward before. 90%, over 90% of all my funds come from ward residents. Because hey, where did I hear that before? Uh, and, and, you know, the ward residents know that. All right. We can, let's take a call in before we go to a break, because we have a caller from your ward. I always want to take your ward callers when they call. John, from the 46th Ward, welcome to politics tonight. You're on with uh, one of the two people who's going to be your next alderman. So go ahead with your question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically I wanted to ask them, um, neither of them have uh, uh, had a strong, uh, let's say, fan base in the uh, uh, many uh, subsidized housing. And, especially, and I was wondering... How are they going to sort of bridge that gap? And um, I know that the talk has been that that's been Helen Schiller's fault, but now that it's a new era, in what ways are you going to build relationships, especially for the, the youth? There's been a number of people who've lived there for 
um, you know, since childhood and that, that are now becoming young adults. And okay. I was wondering how are you going to do that for them? John, thank next you very much. And I want to get the answers in before break if we can. Molly, why don't you take the question first? Your well, thoughts? you know, I want to tie that uh, question into what James just said. You know, we've had a lot of small dollar contributions from people that don't have a lot of money in the world. These are people that uh, want jobs coming in, and the people who, uh, you know, can provide those jobs and provide the entertainment industry within the 46th Ward see uh, the potential for me to be a leader in bringing those jobs to the community. So, you know, I've been reaching out. Our office is right by uh, the Cornerstone Shelter uh, on Clifton. Um, we've uh, developed a very good relationship huh. with a lot of the people that are serviced through uh, the Cornerstone um, people that come into my office every single day. All right, James, I, quick comment. I'm sorry, i got to be shocked. we got to be shocked. James, let me come to you. Sure, quick comment. Well, I've already, I, I, do I need to reach out? I've already reached out. The community knows me well. And I they know you're an example, asshole, too. Uh, there was a social service, uh, Mercy Housing. There was a, a conflict that the Mercy Housing residents had, or the staff had, with the area residents. And uh, State Representative Greg Harris and Cindy Holland, the president of Mercy Housing, called me in to serve as a mediator. And the result of that, the uh, residents inside Mercy Housing feel much safer, and the residents outside in the surrounding community feel much safer as well. That 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 uh, uh, support is already there. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more questions and issues for the 46th Ward. One of these two people will be the next alderman in the 46th Ward. You're watching Politics Tonight only on CLTV.